Good afternoon, gentlemen. My name is Jonathan Sarton. I think we've all met already. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about OpenNMS and OTRS. Um, a couple of questions first. Has anybody used any of the trouble tickets integrations with... Well, yes. <laughs> this is partly your fault too, actually, David. Um, anybody not professionally involved in looking after multiple OpenNMS installations has used it? Any OTRS users? Oh, good. <laughs> I can say nice things about the OTRS guys. Because <laughs> they're lovely fellows. What I'm talking about, regard, what I'll talk about with regards to OTRS is pretty similar for any of the other existing uh, trouble ticket system implementations for OpenNMS. Um, I know there's one out there for RT, because uh, I was involved in that to some degree. What else is there? Have we got Remedy? Sure. Hmm? Jira. Jira. Which one did you do, Antonio? Sorry. Trouble ticket integration. It's uh, Remedy. 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 So the integrations are there for a number of trouble ticket systems, and they, they all work in the same way. Um, actually, it's quite easy to implement. Well, it should be <laughs> quite easy to implement. <laughs> it uh, tends the, the the difficulty that. Um, that I found, and I'll come to in a bit, tends not to be with the OpenNMS part, but with, with the bits you're integrating with. So I'll kick off um, a little bit about me and OpenNMS. I was looking at um, the OGP page on the wiki in 2004, apparently. I got a green polo. I still have that green polo, but unfortunately it's only for, for painting these days. It's looking, <laughs> a, looking a little bit sorry, sorry but I've still got it. I, I should have actually, before it went too bad, I should have held on to it and so it framed it. But I didn't. I can get you a new Yeah, but it's got the old logo on it. Yeah, yeah it does. So, so that's me. Actually, you can't tell there, but I am wearing the green polo. That was a picture that we took because Torres asked me to write a small piece for some online periodical and they wanted a head and shoulder shot. That's where that comes from. And as I got older, I still got involved with OpenNMS. Um, this is the infamous picture of me at, at DevJam, which is a few years later. That, that's um, me struggling with the improvements in, in the OpenNMS code base. Uh, the first picture, um, all my development was done using Vi. Yeah, that one I was trying to come to, come to terms with Spring Framework and Eclipse and um, Maven and a whole bunch of stuff um, and the shades are to hide the burning red angry eyes <laughs> um, and this is a little bit later I, I worked for a, a, a change job by them worked for a, a different startup a company called Truphone they're a, a MVNO uh, I no longer work for Truphone that is in Interactions Data Centre uh, in Hanbury Court, now Hanbury Street, which is um, Old Truman Brewery. It's a nice data centre, it's a good, good spot. Um, and if nobody's seen, I can't see, this is the OpenNMS SourceForge CCA um, uh, movie that uh, we put together, I think Ben edited. Um, it's worth looking for um, on uh, YouTube just simply to see us all making fools of ourselves. Uh, unfortunately, um, wisdom appears to have declined as I've got older, and I'm still involved with OpenNMS, but not quite so much as I used to be. Some things you just can't shake off, though, um, and that, that's OTRS. I originally got involved with uh, the OTRS implementation in 2008 when I was working at Truepone. They had a support contract with OTRS, it was a, their trouble ticket system, I believe it still is. Um, we had the OTRS guys come over a couple of times helping us out with issues um, and at that point they seemed quite interested to do the integration with OpenNMS and uh, uh, I thought it would be a good thing for, for Truefone. Truefone were an odd outfit, uh, one of those organisations that has about a million and one different network management systems and uh, we, it was, there was always a constant battle to see who would be the winner. I, th I think Nagios eventually won because everybody could drive it. Uh, OpenNMS was rather my speciality there. So, this was the first attempt, and, and the feature was added in, in OpenNMS 1.5.94, um, and we supported OTRS 2.2, um, and it was a bitch to get working. Um, 
I spoke to the OTRS guys and said, yeah, we've just, we've just, integra- we've just introduced SOAP support in, in OTRS. Um, what actually they meant was we've just started to use SOAP Lite to be able to serialize and deserialize <laughs> objects across the network. Um, and it's not the same thing. Um, you would get, we would get, you'd get kind of raw Perl. OTRS is all Perl. I mean, you get kind of raw Perl objects appear at the end, end of your network connection. Um, and it took me about a week to figure out that there was no um, WSDL for it. There was no definition of the interface because there wasn't an interface. You just threw stuff at it and it was stuck. Uh, so what we went ahead and did was wrote um, a module for OTRS to properly support SOAP, provide a proper SOAP interface. And that still exists. If you have an OTRS instance or OTRS up until 3.0.0, you will need to use the OpenNMS OTRS module. And that's kind of confusing, but it's a module that goes into OTRS that provides a nice structured um, web services interface, nice structured SOAP interface that uh, OpenNMS can talk to. Um, it, was quite, it was quite hard to get working. It's fully documented now, and it's very easy to, very easy to use if you have a, one of the older versions of OTRS. Um, The way it works, or all, in fact all the trouble ticket modules work, um, is if you look at the, the, the OpenNMS site, which is across here on, on the right, um, there is a specific plugin written to handle the interface between OpenNMS and whatever trouble, tic- trouble ticketing system it uses. So the ticketing system basically requires you to implement a plugin to a particular interface. So we, I wrote the plugin for OTRS, um, and that plugin handles really just a, uh, a couple of things. It handles communication for creating and getting and updating ticket status for implements a, a few very simple child methods, and it handles translation of OpenNMS's internal rep- representation of what a trouble ticket should look like, and whatever trouble ticketing system you've got internal representation of what a ticket should look like. So, for example, OpenNMS has, has a certain idea about severity of, of tickets based on event severity. Um, you may not use the same representation, and in fact you don't use the same representation in OTRS. So there has to be a mapping between what OpenNMS calls major or critical and what OTRS might call five or three or something like that. The representations, are internal representations of those tickets are different. So the plugin has to handle that. But it's not a lot of code. The complexity is that most of the complexity is, is in the network interface between the plugin and the ticketing system that it needs to talk to. And as I said, in the first version of, of, of uh, support for OTRS, we implemented that with, with a plugin, uh, which is a, a bunch of Perl code. It's uh, all OTRS plugins, at least up to 3.0.0 um, OTRS, are implemented as uh, OPM files. Uh, I think it's OTRS package something. Anyway, it's a standard format file, and you throw, throw this file at OTRS, it will import it and load this additional plugin, which is effectively just a, a bit of Perl. It's, uh, uh, in the case of the OpenMS plugin, it's something that handles um, the, the HTTP requests and also some modules for formatting. It's two files for the OpenNMS site for configuring it, openNMS.properties and OTRS.properties. Um, no XML there, I'm afraid. They're just properties files. Um, I got nagged for that. So what did I learn from that? Um, Perl and SOAP don't, or at least didn't at the time, mix. Well, I think... Um, Soap lights a lot better than it used to be. Um, there was a period of time where it was not maintained, and that was well, and that was the period of time that, that uh, I was working on it, unfortunately. And soap is simple in the same way that SNMP is simple. Um, it isn't. Uh, it's needlessly complicated, um, and it's suffered from the hands of the standards bodies that have been involved, involved with it. I think um, there are four different types of encoding. Uh, that you can use for SOAP messages. Um, SOAP Lite, in the version that, that, that I had, uh, said, yeah, we'll support all of them, but basically unless you do anything other than RPC encoded, um, uh, was the, uh, 
RPC encoded whistle, that's incorrect, it's the RPC encoded messages, um, you're on your own. You know, we've tested it with this, it should work with others, but do it this way. Um, so I thought, right, okay, I'll do it that way. Um, and I got flamed by pretty much everybody who I talked to about it. They said, this is not WSI compliant, you should be using document literal message format. Oh well, uh, at that point I got it working and wasn't about to change it. Um, be prepared to own the code to the end of time. I, what I tried to do with this one is uh, I spoke to a chap uh, called Martin Edenhofer. He, he, at the time he was um, uh, the CTO at OTRS. I think he was the original author of it. I think, I think OTRS, uh, maybe a, somebody can correct me if I know better, but I think it came out of Lufthansa. Um, originally it was some code that this guy worked in at Lufthansa and he floated it out and it's kind of its own. He since, Martin since left OTRS itself, although he does, he d is involved with supporting it with his own professional services. <coughs> Tried to hand it off to him. Said, hey Martin, I've written this code. This is great. This is, this is a good example of the, of the kind of modules that you, you guys want. It's an add-on for OTRS and it integrates with OpenNMS and I'm talking to, oh, I forgot the got that professional services guy who we arranged it with, talked to him and he said, yeah, that'd be great. And then he said, actually, no, I'd rather you took all the glory. Can you keep hold of it, please? And, uh, okay. So it stayed uh, an open NMS, maintained piece of code, principally, uh, Jonathan maintained piece of code. Um, run screaming every time anybody mentions Perl. I, I, that's just uh, an article of faith now. I must do that. And try and finish your Dev Jam projects at Dev Jam. Uh, I started work on this at Dev Jam. Um, I was still working on it months after Dev Jam finished. But it's out there, it works. A few years went by. Um, Truephone needed to downsize to get some more funding, so I no longer work for them. Uh, and I spent three years working for a defense company uh, who don't use a lot of open source software. Fast forward to 2013, that's Dev Jam. Um, it's last year's Dev Jam. Yeah. I was wearing that shirt and the same trousers yesterday, actually. That's me next to the guy with the beard on the far left. Um, anybody thinking about going to Dev Jam, uh, if you have the opportunity, you should. It's, uh, I sadly can't go this year. Um, uh, that's family stuff. But uh, it's the best week I had last year. It was great fun. And there was baseball. And you do all kinds of weird things in Facebook. Everybody has to stand up halfway through, and I, I get so confused. So um, we found out prior, so prior to Dev Jam, I got a mention from from Taurus and a few other people that uh, OpenNMS, uh, the OTRS program, didn't work with OTRS 3.1. Um, so I keep mentioning that URL. That that was my blog. I hardly update it now, and I looked at it recently and. I'd say a good 30% of its contents is me bitching about doing OpenNMS and OTRS, so it's worth, worth looking at just for a giggle. Lesson learned. So Torres said, uh, handsome dude there, this OTRS thing, would it make a great Google Summer of Code 2013 project? And I said, no, 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 no. <coughs> don't worry, I'll do it. I did the last one. It'll be fine. Yeah, right. How hard can it be? Van. Good news is OTRS now has a proper WSI compliant document literal SOAP interface. It's great. It's really good. Bad news is the WSDL is enormous. So, um, uh, so generating Java stubs is difficult and it had errors. It had both it had syntax errors and things that were just wrong that didn't match the things that OTRS did. So I think they probably carved it out by hand. I don't think they, they had a, a WSDL generator that could generate WSDL from their code. Um, so I fixed that uh, eventually, and I'll tell you a bit more about that. And the results are in a OpenMS branch. I don't think it's, the code is actually in a release yet. I'm not entirely sure. Nobody's been shouting for it. Um, if anybody does, we, we can address that. So it's in, in a branch called Feature OTRS 3.1 Integration 2. Um, I was going to say, don't ask about integration one. Uh, that was a result of me having an argument with Git and just deciding that that was just such a horrible mess. And then I accidentally deployed it when I shouldn't have uh, accidentally uh, synced it up when I shouldn't have done. And then Ben had to back it out. Uh, it, was just, it was horrible. So, good news is um, we don't have to own any code in OTRS anymore um, unless people are using the L3.0. 
uh, and older OTRS versions. They have a generic interface, um, and the corrections to the WSDL uh, have gone back into OTRS's code. Um, so they've got corrections to the WSDL, that's all updated. Um, and there's a new plugin. Uh, what I, because it's document literal code rather than uh, uh, RPC encoded, I can't use the same SOAP library. So originally um, the version 3. Point, other version 3.0 and below module uses um, Apache Axis. So what we've got is yet more Java class libraries. Um, what the 3.1 plugin because Axis doesn't support this uh, document literal message format, we've used Apache CXF because, well, that's Craig's idea. It seemed to fit with everything else we were doing uh, at the time. Uh, I didn't really want to include too many <laughs> more class libraries as it is. Um, and I've refactored all the, um, the code that uh, does the translation between severity types so that, that that's all changed. So it, it's a lot more modular. Other than that, same configuration files and uh, they're anything easier. OTRS, the, their, their web services interface they call a uh, generic interface. So we speak directly to, to OTRS code now. Uh, it's a lot simpler. Um, well, going back to uh, the lessons learned bit, I learned many of the other lessons. Um, still didn't learn the finish of DevJam projects at DevJam, seeing as the, uh, the code is not in a release yet. Um, and in terms of being prepared to the own code until the end of time, um, well, what I had to do was fork OTRS uh, to get my changes back into OTRS. Um, I've said fork OTRS or things similar to it many times over the last year. Uh, but I forked it. That was their suggestion and sent them a pull request. Um, um, so I had to sign another contributors agreement, uh, one for OTRS. Um, very similar to the OpenNMS one. I think they're stalking us. <laughs> and the lessons learned this time around is um, if you're working with multiple open source projects, you come along to another project, you go, hey, I'm a developer for, for OpenNMS and you've got some problems with your code, but the good news is I fixed it for you. Um, can you just, just put this in your code file? I look at it again. <laughs> uh, I said, but, but it's really simple, he said. There are 5,000 changes. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I did reformat your code for you because the formatting was nasty. There's actually only about four changes. Right. Okay, so I, we had several attempts to get that right. But uh, be prepared to put that extra bit of effort in when you're dealing with somebody else's project. They, you've got no, they, you have no provenance in their eyes. They don't know who you are. They're just going to look at what you're doing and go, that is clueless. He doesn't know what he's doing. This doesn't look like Perl at all. And still, finish your DevJam projects at DevJam. Um, I will learn that one one day. So, uh, is anybody interested in a quick view of how it works? Mm -hmm. It's not particularly riveting. But the good thing is, if you take a look at this, um, it is very similar to the way all the other trouble ticket integrations work. So, once you've got this one, if you've got Remedy or RT or something you're going to go and implement a JIRA, something you'd like to implement your own interface for. Um, it'll work like this. Right. Oh, that's good. Is my laptop falling off the network again, Jeff? Or has it gone to sleep? One minute. One of the problems is I don't have an HDMI. I'd like to show you it working. See what I was doing last night, I spent all last night yeah. like with Photoshop. <laughs> Making up pages.
try and reconnect to the network. Maybe change the IP address. Hmm? The IP address is changing. I don't know, I've had the same DHCP address since I've been here. It's my favourite. There we go. Yeah, hey Jerome, in this room's not been consistent for me. So, um, the trouble ticket interface is all handled via um, alarms. Actually, Antonio or David would be better at explaining this uh, than I am, but I'm just going to walk you through the pictures. Once you've enabled the trouble ticketing integration, you get an additional option appear on the alarm detail page. So if we look here, there's a, a demonstration event. If I follow that down there, you see ticket state is empty. And it's just annotated as an event specifically for today. And I've, I've got the option to create ticket now. So if I hit the create ticket button, what will happen is the uh, web interface will send an event to get pick, picked up by the, uh, the ticketer daemon. Uh, the ticketer daemon will take that event and create a ticket for you. This is your recording. Well, mostly the ticketer stuff does does most of the stuff, and then just the last moment it hands off the uh, the open end message internal representation of the ticket ticket object. That reminds me, we also changed the ticket object recently in OpenNMS and that gave me a big headache too, but I, that's a whole other subject. Um, so I had to make some changes. Did you ever change the API as part? I think, I, think it was, I think it changed from um, we were moving away from caster to another way of representing the ticket um, and it changed the ticket subtly, so I had to fix both. Slight side there. So I, well I got the ticket and create pending. So what basically all that's done is it's sent, sent an event to the um, ticket daemon. If we go back, I'll show you where that appears. Yeah, so the web UI is bung the event there, telling ticket D to go ahead and create um, a ticket based on that alarm. And if I do a refresh here, yeah. refresh the, the ticket state's now open. So whatever trouble ticket system we've got on the end of, end of this, it now thinks it's got a ticket. Another piece of advice that should have gone in the lessons learned is don't let Ubuntu upgrade you to Apache 2.4 the night before a presentation. <laughs> it wasn't actually the night before, it was the night before the night before. But still, I was up quite late. Between that and nosebleed or whatever the SSL vulnerability was called, <laughs> I, I had a bad day. Uh, okay, so we've got the ticket ID now. If I'm really lucky, if I follow that link, one of the things that um, one of the configuration files does is create a link from this page to the ticket ID in the ticketing system. So I'll follow that. We have a ticket in, in, Open, in OTRS. Um, that's the quick link to it. If you go back to the OTRS dashboard and do a refresh, I've actually got two two events here. Uh, this is the one I created most recently. It's the one we were just looking at. 162. So, same ticket there. And I can go ahead and close that ticket. So somewhere around here. But I've, I've got my looking at people glasses on, not my reading things glasses. You have to excuse me. So if we hit close, we got the option to close it. And we say put something in here. So that's closed. It's gone now. Gone from OTRS. 
It's open NMS know about it. Well, doesn't instantly know about it. Um, so you have to get. You can ha you can have uh, an automation that will go and check that kind of stuff for you. The way that I'm going to show you here is I just hit update ticket, and that's again that's event driven. What it's doing is it, it's telling um, the ticket ticketer to go and have a chat with OTRS. So it's telling the, the ticket demon here to have a chat via the plugin with OTRS the generic interface to say right, um, what's your current state? If we go back and just do a refresh on that page, we can see the ticket's closed. And that's it. That is the integration with OTRS, which is very similar to the integration with Remedy, although I think the Remedy one is a little bit more sophisticated in what it can send to Remedy that uh, the RT one is, is, is quite similar. I believe you can also integrate RT via notifications. I think Alex Finger did some work on that. Um, it's very simple. Um, it's a, despite my cursing, in, intellectually it was a very stimulating piece of work to do. And what I wanted to offer it as is not really a demonstration of a useful feature because you guys, I think there's probably only one person in the room bar the uh, uh, open NMS group guys uh, who's likely to use it in anger. Um, it's an interesting self-contained piece of work. I found it very intellectually satisfying to do. Much more intellectually satisfying than that big black hole where a few years passed. Like, yeah, I mentioned when I was off working for the defence contractor. Um, it was easy to do. I learnt a lot about Perl, Java, SOAP, um, and working with open source projects that didn't know or trust me, and working with OTRS. Uh, so <coughs> it's great. Um, and as an example of getting involved from the development side of things, my, my background is not. Last serious development I did before starting working on, um, on OpenNMS back in 2004 was I was a COBOL programmer in the early 90s. Um, and then I, then I went to be a sysadmin. So it was a good thing to get me back to development. It's not all that hard. Well, thank you for listening. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> This is this is a point solution, so um, it kind of lives lives separately to that. Um, I can answer that. No. Thank you, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> so no, there's been no. I mean, we've looked at the thing. They, there is a a lot of fields would be similar, but they aren't the same. So we haven't deliberately But I'd be happy to do that because I know all of this. Any other questions? No, thank you very much for being so tolerant.